Let's talk about ChatGPT. What is ChatGPT? Well, it's an advanced AI language model built by OpenAI. It gives you human-like text responses based on user input on a wide variety of topics and contexts. In other words, you can ask it questions, and these are known as prompts, and it'll give you an answer, and these are known as responses. Since ChatGPT has been released last year, the impact on our society has been huge. In fact, many are saying that this software, this AI technology, is the greatest invention since the wheel. It's gonna impact everything that we do in every job that we have. Now specifically, ChatGPT has been talked about how it's gonna affect us as developers or coders. And what do we do about that? Well, I think we should pay attention to it. So I'm gonna give you my best tips of how we can use this AI to improve our work as a developer. One of the things you can do with ChatGTP is just generate templates or starting HTML pages before you start to work to save you a lot of time for typing. For example, we could create a sample landing page with HTML and CSS. Now, once that's built, we could also tell it to rewrite it and use a specific framework like Bootstrap. So I can also, can you use Bootstrap? instead. One caveat here is what I've noticed is that these CDNs are typically wrong. And so what you're going to have to do is get the version of that you want from the bootstrap documentation and just replace it here. You can also train it to tell it what the CDNs are, but either way, the first pass, these are probably gonna be wrong. So you probably need to change them. Now, another thing this can be really good is it can summarize articles for you. So let's say you want to learn about something like Blazor. So you can say, give me the top five Blazor articles. And it does it, but what you could do is ask it to summarize one. And so let's say summarize number three. Now I would go out and check to make sure this is correct, but in general, this looks at first pass, this looks correct. So that's kind of cool. If you need to learn about things, you can use ChatGPT to summarize articles for you, provide the link to you, you can go out and check it out. Another good use for ChatGDP is we could use it to generate SQL. So what if we wanted to create a schema for say some orders and some customers? So it's general prompt that could create the tables for us in SQL. So it created the table for us, and this may be particularly useful when you are new to SQL or you don't know all the syntax, this can get you down the road um, pretty quickly. And also gives you a good explanation here. What if we want to do a little more? What if we wanted to say, create some sample data. Now this is useful for me because a lot of times you don't want to type this in all this data in, so this will just generate it for us. This can create insert statements. And then we could run those insert statements and it would push the data inside of our database for us. Kind of cool. Now you can see here we have John Smith, Jane Doe, and Bob Johnson. What if we wanted just the orders for John Smith? So we could write a SQL statement for that. You can see here we've got a select statement with the join, and this should work. We should be able to paste that into our platform of our choice and it'll return the data that we're looking for. Another thing that I find a little bit difficult to do sometimes is writing regex, especially as they get more complex. I typically find myself looking those up. And so ChatGTP is a really good way to generate the regex for me and also trying to generate the bullet plate code. So what if we wanted to create a, a regex for kind of a complex password scheme. We want to check to make sure that the password the user entered um, is complex enough for our, for our need. 
I could write a prompt for that. So using JavaScript, give me a regex uh, for password strength, one lowercase, one uppercase, one number, one special character, and be at least eight characters long. Now you could put whatever scheme you want in here and it's gonna generate the regex for me and also a way to use it. So kind of cool. What happens a lot for developers is they get put on a project and they get sent some code and they don't know what the code does. They have a hard time reading it early on, especially early on in a career. Could ChatGDP take some sample code and tell me what's going on there? So let's just check it out here. So I've got some code here and I wrote a thing that says, given this code, write a summary of what is happening, example code here. Let's just generate a response here from this. And it tells me more about it. So that's kind of neat. I want to give you some help in finding the job here. And so can ChatGDP help us find a job or help us find a role? And one of the things that I think is really good is for interview prep. So what if we were interviewing for C-sharp roles? Could ChatGDP help me um, interview prep? And so what I want to do is find, give me the, the top 10 interview questions for C-sharp with answers and code examples were example were apical. Now notice here a little hint here is if it quits um, generating code, you can just type the word continue and usually it'll pick up where it's left off. That's because there's a character limit for each response. I'm gonna hit continue and see if it'll pick up where it left off, and it did. I'm going to do continue again until I get to all 10 of my questions that I want. Now, the reason I asked for code is because I believe the best way to answer any of your question is to talk about the code. And so now we have our academic answer and how you would implement it with actual code. If you know these two things on any kind of interview question, you're going to do really well. So this is a good interview hack as you're preparing for those interviews. Now, what if you go to the interview and they ask you a question that you don't know the answer to? And so this would be your interview review hack. In other words, you could write down all the questions that you're asked during the interview and put those in a notebook. And the ones that you struggle with, we can use ChatGDP here to answer it for us so we can better prepare for that next interview. So for example, what if they ask you how to reverse a string without using a for loop, maybe using recursion? And you were asked that. And this is a common question a lot of people are asked and a lot of juniors actually struggle with. So let's see if ChatGDP can help us out. What you could do here is use every question that you were asked, check your answers against um, how you performed during the interview to what was given to you and improve every single time. So anytime you're asked a question, write it down and come in here and you can use AI to check that to see if your answer you gave was correct or if you just bonded entirely and now you know the answer to better prepare for that next interview now we can also use um, ChatGP just to write complete functions for so let's write a function for VizBuzz here now we could do some things like what if we wanted to write a unit test so I can write a unit test write a unit test and that's what it did. And a lot of times when you're coding, sometimes you write a function and then it is needs to be changed or you're asked to refactor that. So we can refactor our FizzBuzz example here. Refactor FizzBuzz to use ternary operator. Now, when you're working on the job that you do get asked to do quite a lot of things. Now, one thing that I find a lot that is very time consuming is creating test data. So let's say that we wanted to create some JSON test data and I didn't want to type all that in and I knew what the properties were to my object. So I could just prompt it in here and I'm going to create some JSON data for five sample orders of widgets and the properties are order ID, order date, price, quantity, name, description, and customer ID. And you can see here, it's gonna generate objects or test data 
an array of objects for this particular test data. Now, if you're, and you could customize this by the properties of your object, kind of neat. Now, the other thing that I find very useful for this is what if you're working with an API and the API sends you back some JSON and you need to convert that JSON data into actual objects or classes. So we could use this to create a C sharp class from the JSON data. You can see here it gave us a usage and the class that we'd use for widget order here. So what do I think about AI for developers? First, let's talk about the positives. This is an absolute platform shift, meaning it's just like when desktop came out in the early 90s, the late 90s web came out, and in 07 mobile came out. All of those platform shifts allow developers to build things they couldn't before, and billion-dollar companies arose out of that. This platform shift will be no different. Billion dollar companies will be created and that gives you, the developer, a massive opportunity. The other thing I like about AI is the productivity gains. You can see in the examples I showed, it saves me a lot of time typing. I think this is very important for juniors and seniors. Seniors can use this to create boilerplate things or massive amounts of text they would have to type in otherwise to save them time. The other thing that it can do really well is fill in knowledge gaps. If you don't know about something, AI can tell you about that. And that's true in seniors or juniors. Because a lot of times when we're coding, we don't have everything memorized. We end up Googling or going to Stack Overflow. ChatGTP will allow us to now just ask those questions right where we're at, and it should make it more efficient to fill in those knowledge gaps. So let's talk about some of the challenges I see with the current iteration of AI. First off, ChatGPT, as it sits today, is a chatbot, and it involves me cutting and pasting between a website and my IDE, and this is problematic and it slows me down. I don't particularly like it. However, with Copilot X and this interface being moved more into the editor and maybe give us more context about what we're working on, this should improve over time. Now, the biggest concern about all of these AI tools is hallucinations. Sometimes it's just factually wrong. The other thing that it does um, that I don't like particularly well is like if I ask for a solution, it gives me a different answer every time I ask it. So it's not consistent in its advice. And because it's wrong, we need to constantly validate it. So we can't just let it loose in its current form. The other promise of AI is that it will write complete apps for us. In its current iteration, I don't think that's necessarily true, but it works exceptionally well in the micro, just not in the macro. And the more complex the things that we're working on, if we put it in that large context, the more confused it gets. But if we're working on that small problem or that break it down to that very small thing, it's very good at that. So it works great in the micro, not so well in the macro. However, the more you know about coding, the better you'll be able to leverage these AI tools. You need to understand terminology and syntax to get the most out of it. We also need to be better prompt engineers to make it better. But the more we know about coding, the better we'll be able to leverage this. In other words, in the hands of a craftsman, this is going to be amazing. If you don't know anything about coding, it's going to be very difficult to leverage AI to its maximum potential. Finally, we need to embrace AI as a tool and recognize the massive potential we have given this platform shift. It's not going to replace developers, but it's going to make a senior developer better at their job. It's going to make a junior developer easier to come to speed on certain topics when they have knowledge gaps. So it's going to improve us in all areas of the development. But you still need to learn how to code. If you want to make the most of AI, knowing more about coding is definitely beneficial. That's why here at Coder Founder, we'd love to be your teacher, your coach, your mentor, and to teach you to code so that you can take advantage of this massive opportunity. Go to learn.coderfoundry.com. Hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding.